Hi you guys, it's Dr. BT and I wanted to do a quick syllabus review. I um, just want you to see um, on the first page, it just kind of shows um, your prerequisites um, for freshman admission, for regular and accelerated. I'm going to move down to the general school policies. So um, standards for professional behavior are academic integrity code, which we um, strongly um, support um, accommodations for disability. So if you have any, any um, testing accommodations, um, please make sure that you're registered with the SAS Center um, and let me know uh, so I can make sure to get your test um, set up for you. Um, incomplete grades, um, usually we don't have any of those, but if you have an extenuating circumstance, that requires you to get an incomplete in the class. Um, we'll talk about that later. later. Um, civility and non-discrimination. Um, so we really strongly um, support civility as we've had difficulties with it um, over the past couple of years on campus. Um, so these are just our civility and non-discrimination policies. You can look at those. Um, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, we all support those. And as nurses, you should as well. Student health and well-being. Um, you know, we have the Student Health Center downstairs um, in Building 39A, where you can get medical services. Um, the only thing you have to pay for are labs. And then also the Counseling Center. So a lot of you um, struggle with anxiety and want to be high, very high achievers. Um, so if you're having any kind of problems that you need to talk to someone about such as anxiety, depression, any anything like that, you can always contact the Counseling Center and it's free. I will tell you though the wait list is probably about one to two months and so it would be good for you to go ahead and get your name on the list if you think you're having any issues. Attendance and conduct. <clears throat> so we do have an attendance policy um, and we expect you to come to class. Um, if I make it not mandatory um, and you can view it online, that, that will not be held against you. I'm doing that in an effort to uh, decrease the spread of COVID, but you can do either one. You can come to class or you can watch online if you are given that opportunity. Emergency response. If we have some type of emergency, I will let you know. Um, how to proceed and I have things in place in case we had to go online on Zoom. Of course you have to have all of your uh, vaccinations as required by the School of Nursing um, certifications, your black ground check, your drug screen. And then of course when you're in the clinical practice area you always have to have your badge and that's a hospital policy and then we um, reinforce it. Clean pressed uniforms, um, your hair has to be appropriately groomed, um, appropriate jewelry, personal hygiene. I know that you guys are all very well groomed, um, but that's for the patient. Um, arrive on time and cell phones must be in airplane mode at all times, not to be used for personal calls. S student safety, this just talks about your um, safety in the clinical experience. So you will have to achieve a 73 if you're taking this class for the first time, a 73 um, on your quiz and test average to pass. You have to get a satisfactory in your laboratory evaluation, I mean your lab slash clinical evaluation. Your clinical evaluation, if you get more than two unsatisfactories, um, that is not a progression and you will have to um, come back and repeat the clinicals. So I'm sure that you will be fine. Math proficiency, make sure that, I know most of you have already taken your math exam, um, but make sure that you um, pass your math, math, math exam on this by the second attempt so that you can progress forward. These are just our objectives. Here's our, here's our book, Laudermilk, Keishon Perry, and Alden, um, Maternity, Women's Health, 12th edition. Make sure you have that. Our quizzes and grades. So you have to have at least a 73% weighted test average on examinations and the final to pass. So you're going to have four tests, 50% of your grade, final exam, 20% of your grade, quizzes, case studies, adaptive quizzing, all of this um, 
is like the goose that laid the golden egg. There's 30% of your grade that you can easily achieve an A on um, in class participation. And I do really uh, take attendance or I look to see if you're commenting or, you know, how much, how much interaction you have. Have adaptive quizzing at the end. Um, and then there's class participation. And of course, we're going to have a HESI exam at the end of the class. Um, if you, we want you to get an 850, if you do not get an 850, actually, if you don't get a 900, it's set at, um, then you'll have to do remediation packets. Everybody gets remediation, even if you do score over an 850, um, but you have to turn it in if you um, get less than a, a 900. So 850 is passing. So we really, we want you to get the 850 to not have to turn in the remediation packets. Um, you know our grading scale. And so the rest is just the objectives for a class. Um, and you can read through these yourself. Objective 2, Objective 3, and this just kind of goes through the whole class information. 4. And then here is some our A1 standards um, and Laudermilk um, talks about our learning resources. We do have some audio visuals that you can look at as well. And then again, your textbook. So you guys, when you go to the clinical setting, um, you will take your paperwork and you're going to write a soap note at the end of the day. And that will help to satisfy the, the requirements of your clinical day. So what is a soap note? Subjective information, what the patient says. So, you know, my stomach hurts. And then objective information. Those are things observed by the clinician. So that would be like them wincing or crying in pain, holding their stomach, elevated blood pressure, elevated heart rate, diaphoresis, sweating, um, any type of lab, changes in lab values or any kind of diagnostic text, test. Um, so the A is what you think it is. So pain related to um, no bowel movement in 14 days. Um, and then your plan, what are you going to do? So you're going to have them walk. Um, you're going to administer the medications as prescribed. Um, maybe a, a warm um, heating pad to their abdomen. So it's the things that you're going to do. So um, you're going to do this every single time that you go to clinic. You're going to write a soap note for the end of the day. Um, so when you go to clinicals, um, you're going to be put in the different areas and you will this will satisfy your clinical focus sheets you do have home base hours which now we call them you don't really have to go to a home base but it's a clinical activity so you're going to have to do some type of out external clinical activity and then you're going to have to turn in information about that so we'll talk about this a little bit more later there'll be many opportunities for you and we want to make sure that you get off to a good start these are just what you're going to do in clinic. Clinical focus sheet two, clinical focus sheet three, four, five. This is your community hours. And we need for you to do exactly what it says here and turn that in. You're going to turn, this is your, the last page is your clinical evaluation. You're going to type your name in here, your end number, and you will print this out these two pages, 25 and 26, oh, yep, and you will take those with you to clinical, and your clinical professor will, um, you know, have that to write on the whole entire time you're there. So this is, you need to take this for the first day of clinical, your clinical evaluation, and turn it into your clinical professor. So that's it for the overview of the syllabus.